about um, integrating H5P activities into your uh, course. Um, and H5P is um, an online platform that provides a number of different types of activities, as you can see here, um, from dictation, recordings, um, word search, flashcards, etc. And uh, today I'm just going to focus on the interactive video uh, type of activity. And as it says here, you can use it um, on WordPress, Moodle, etc. And so we're going to talk about integrating it into Moodle. Um, just so you know, H5P is um, something that you can you can create the activities and download them basically on this H5P site. Um, but if you want to store them for any length of time, you have to uh, pay for an account. Um, so that's why I'm doing it through Moodle because it's basically a free plugin for Moodle. So, um, like I say, I'm going to focus on an interactive video um, and I'm going to be integrating it into my Moodle course here. And the type of activity that I would like to do um, with interactive video here is I'm going to use a video from YouTube um, called uh, How It's Made Potato Chips. And I'm going to use this um, for a sort of focused listening practice, um, imagining that I want to focus on the use of passive um, to talk about uh, process for um, uh, probably sort of lower intermediate or intermediate students. Um, so I'm doing a specific language focus on whether they can hear the passive and so on. So this is a video that's about four minutes long and I'm thinking that probably I'll have the students listen to it and then every now and then I'll stop and have them answer a question before they can go on. And before um, uh, doing anything with this video it's probably a good idea to check um, the transcript and um, just to make sure that I do have the language that I want to focus on because if it's not in the video that's going to be a problem but I can see here we're invented yes there's some passive there and so on so as we go through I can find a couple of places where um, where I think okay yeah this is this has got the target language in it and I might pick out some other things as well because this is uh, basically focused listening that I'm looking for okay so what I'm going to do is go to the Moodle course first of all and have to keep moving myself around here. Um, turn on editing for my course um, because I want to be able to put in an activity and I'm going to put it into uh, the uh, topic 2 here just because my topic 1 is getting quite full. So I'm going to click on add an activity or resource down here and then I'm going to locate uh, H5P interactive content. Okay, when I click add um, what this is going to do is load in the H5P plugin, which is um, built into uh, Moodle. And you'll see that um, the first thing that opens up here is this uh, H5P um, uh, editor or you know, this place to select things. And there's, it says here, 41 different types of activities, but I've recently used interactive videos, so it's there. But you would just go, go down and um, find the one that you want. Um, if it doesn't already exist in my Moodle site, you can click Get and it will download it. So there's lots of different um, ways that you, uh, different types of activities. Like I say, this one I'm going to focus on interactive video. So I'm going to say, I'm going to name this thing. It's going to be how it's made potato. Good Lord. Uh, okay, something like that. All right, and then I'm going to uh, select this. And that's going to load in the plugin for just for that type of interactive um, uh, video. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste my um, title into that. It's not really that important, um, this part, because it says it's used for searching reports and copyright. Okay, so the first stage is to add a video. I'm going to click that, and then here I can just enter the URL of the um, video itself. So I'm going to flip, jump over here, um, click Share, and for this purpose I just want this link, which is also the same as the link up here in the uh, address bar. Um, there are other times we're going to use the embed code, but not today. So back over to Moodle, um, I can paste that in and insert that video. 
Um, there are some options here. I don't really need those, but um, you know, interactive video is fine. I could put in um, the uh, title, how it's made if I wanted to here, but and a poster image, which is just instead of the sort of blank screen, I could select one, but I'm not going to do any of that right now. Um, there are a couple of other settings here we might come back to later, but I think we'll just jump in and do our interactions. So as you can see, I'm just going to scoot myself over here for the moment. As you can see, um, it's loaded up the, uh, the video here and then it's got some controls which are not YouTube controls. These are specific to H5P. Okay. Um, at the top along here, you'll see this uh, different row of, uh, row of different buttons here. And these are all different types of activities that you can do to make this particular video or you know the video that you're working on interactive. Um, I'm mostly going to do um, either true false, which would be this one, um, or I can do, uh, let's see, um, this one, which is, um, hang on, I'm going to click on it here. So the uh, single choice. So which one of these is correct? Uh, you can have multiple choice, meaning several of these are correct. You have to pick the right ones and so forth, which uh, is the statement that most corresponds to what's going on um, and so forth. And lots of different um, types of activities that you can use, including just putting some text on top of um, the video. Um, Okay, so uh, the, you know you can experiment with all of these different types of interaction, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I think I'll just use um, the uh, single choice set. So I'm going to be concentrating on that, and I'm going to, going to play the video and listen for um, examples of where the narrator has used passive, and then I'm going to stop the video and ask questions to my students about this. Okay, so there she said they say chips were invented. So I'm going to uh, take a single choice set. Uh, is that really what I want? Yeah, I think it is. Um, and I'm going to click that button. And um, it, it, the things happen pretty fast here, but you notice that there was a little purple button. Um, that would just pop up on the screen and the students would have to click it to answer the question. But I'm going to select poster, which gives me all of the options um, everything just right there on the screen blocks out everything else. So I think that's probably a little bit more um, useful for language learning purposes. Notice that the display time here, that was where I clicked stop at seven seconds in. This is automatically set to 10 seconds. So, so that, that means that that appears for 10 seconds. But I also have pause video selected there. So it's going to stop the video until um, the response is given by the students. OK, um, at this point, um, I, you basically just look at the questions here and I'll say um, uh, something like the narrator just said this and you have to choose which one. So I'll, I'm going to keep it really simple. What did she say? OK, something like that. And then you'll notice that there are some alternatives. Um, I'm going to probably use three here. So uh, the first one that you type should be the correct one. It won't always appear in that order. It'll randomize them. But when you this has to be the correct one, as you can see from this little star here. OK, so they say chips were invented dot dot dot. I'm not going to type out the whole thing um, because I really just want them to focus on this language. And then I can put some alternatives in. They say chips are, are invented. Dot dot dot. I'm going to add one more. I'm going to add an active version. They say chips invented. Okay, so now I've got three options, and one of these is correct. So I don't need to add any more options. Um, I'm going to just have one question, so I don't need to fill this out for the second. And you could add more questions if you want it, but right now I'm just going to do one. Um, I'm going to have a quick look in behavior. So this is going to automatically continue once they've answered. And uh, you've got timeout when they get it right, timeout when they get it wrong. I'm just going to leave that. We've got some little sound effects. <laughs> leave those on. Um, if I want them to have another chance to get it right, they can retry. I, they, 
you, they could do that. I'm just going to leave that on for the moment. And that's it. So I'm going to click done there. Okay, so what's happened is the, do you remember I said there was either a purple button or the poster? So it's given me the poster. I can drag that around. I'm going to resize it so that it actually fills the screen and gives them the full width of those buttons, which is almost there. Okay, something like that. Okay, and if I if I don't like that later, I can always come back and edit it. All I have to do is find it in the timeline down here and, and then click it. And there, if you had sort of several things on top of each other, you've got controls to um, send it to the back and so on. But if I click this, it's just going to go back to the same screen where we were. Okay, so I'm going to go on now. So they, they have to be made with fresh potatoes. So, um, you know, you could ask a true false question here, but I'm just going to carry on with my um, uh, single choice set because I really want to focus on the language. Once again, I'm going to click poster here. Uh, my question is pretty much the same. What did she say? Okay, so I'm going to do that. And once again, I put the, the correct part the correct answer first. So they have to be made with fresh potatoes. So this time I'm actually going to write out the, the the full first clause there. And okay, and now I'm going to, I just copied and pasted that and I'm going to mess it up here. They have to make with fresh potatoes. I'm going to add one more to they has, I'm going to make it like that. It has to be made with fresh potatoes. Okay, so they've got a couple of different um, f false answers there to choose from. Once again, just go down and click done. And here's my thing again. I'm going to drag it over here just like I did before to make it big enough. Something like that. Okay, and on we go. So I'm going to stop here and do a comprehension check. This is just going to be a true or false. So I'm going to say, do the potatoes, are the potatoes washed before they're peeled? So I've got a couple of passives in my question, even though she didn't actually use passive there. So again, I'm going to do a true or false. Um, and so it says question, but since this is true or false, I'm going to make a statement. So the potatoes are washed before before they are peeled. Okay, something like that. And the correct answer is true, so I'm going to leave that there. Uh, let's see if I want to retry, show solution. I'm going to leave all that as it is. Um, and yeah, click done. And oh, it would be great if I spelt potatoes correctly. So now I have to go back in and edit. I'll just take me right back here. And potatoes. This is fun watching me misspell words, isn't it? So now I've got my, um, <laughs> oh good lord, <laughs> now I've got my, so this this is showing you how easy it is to edit if nothing else. Um, notice that there's no built-in spell checker in this dialog box and done. Okay, so now I'm going to resize that. Okay, something like that and so on. You'll notice on the timeline here there are these little circles here which enables me to jump from one um, interactive element to another. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for the moment um, but I want to point out there are a lot of different activities. I've just used two and there's also the, the potential to do a summary task. So you could put something in an overall statement that describes the video or um, you know, something like uh, it, 
you know, it's a, something that summarizes the whole thing. I'm not going to do that for the purposes of this demonstration, but you could. So I've finished making that, let's say. Um, so really all I need to do now is save that. Um, and I think, let me just see if I have interactions. Yep, I think all I have to do at this point is now save it. So I'm going to go down to save and display. And that's going to show me um, what the students will see when they do this activity. Um, one of the things that I, uh, I will come back and look at grade in a second, because let's say I want to assign a few points in my grade book um, to this, but um, I can judge how many, or uh, establish how many points um, the students would get when they do this. Okay, so here's what the students will see. Um, you'll notice that, that there are these dots here. That's the questions that I've uh, put in. So let's play it. Okay, so pause the video, and now it's given my three choices. So I have to listen to that. I can go back. Okay, so I can go back and listen. I'm going to choose the wrong answer first. Okay, you got the, that was the sound, um, and it highlighted the correct one. So I can either continue at this point or retry that one. Okay. Um, in theory, Moodle is remembering my click, so I could see how many attempts it made. It took me to get that. I'm going to continue. Okay, what did she say? They have to be made with fresh potatoes. There we go. Okay, so now I can go on. Notice that after I clicked it, that was a two second delay. Um, that's another um, element that you can uh, change or tweak if you want to, and so on. So now you can continue. Um, there are lots of other options that I haven't talked about. For example, you can skip ahead. Um, one of the interactivities, you can stop at a point and then send them to a different part in the video if you want. Uh, so you could, f for example, say, skip ahead, I'm bored, or no, I'm really interested, stay where we are, or ask them a question, and depending on their answer, it goes to a different part of the video. So that's basically how to incorporate uh, an H5P activity into your Moodle um, site.